doubt seen the number of companies that have really fallen victim to data breaches over the last few years, right? Yeah, the city of New York has seen it too, and the city wants to help keep your personal information as safe as possible. Okay, so joining us with some insight on this is New York City's Chief Privacy Officer, Michael Fitzpatrick. So thank you for coming on, Michael. Good to see you. Good morning. Thanks all for right. having me. So we're all, you know, worried about whether or not our information can get out there. We got passwords for everything, passwords galore. <laughs> you lose track of how many you have. What's your main focus in keeping online information secure? Sure. So I think for, for New Yorkers, and, and I think we all struggle <laughs> with that, right? Um, yeah. Maintaining track of all of our passwords. You know, a really uh, effective tip that folks can utilize um, is implementing what's known as a passphrase. Uh, a passphrase is four unique words that's uh, memorable to you um, that gets you that length of password, um, that gets you that strong password, but makes it difficult for folks to to guess uh, if they were trying to get access to your account. Yeah, we have some of those tips also right there. You said use multi, and also the other one, multi-factor authentic authentication. Multi-factor authentication is, is one certainly um, that, that folks often um, may not be as, as um, they may get frustrated with, but it is a really effective tool. So when we're talking about authentication, mm -hmm. we're talking about the, the mechanism of proving you are who you say you are. And mm -hmm. that's often accomplished with one or three, one or three ways, uh, something you know, which is that password, something you have, which is that physical device, or something you are a biometric, your face ID on your iPhone, for example. By implementing more than one of those things, you're significantly increasing the security of your accounts. When you look at, I guess, the average person, right? A lot of people do a heck of a lot of stuff online, banking. I mean, people's finances are sometimes just solely in apps and whatnot, but then may not be technically savvy when it comes to some things, right? I don't want to put anybody down but you know there's <laughs> a lot of technology are, behind it so how secure would you say a typical person's information is so it's really um, up to that person right um, and, and it's it's something why we just celebrated um, within the privacy industry data privacy day this past Saturday um, really the driver of that is to create awareness publicly and you know I think what's really important for folks to realize is you know when we when we're looking at the nature of compromises um, very frequently, these are not um, sophisticated um, hacking techniques that uh, that are super technical that are allowing for folks to get access. Sometimes that is the case, but very often it's it's uh, it's something that can be preventable by taking these, um, I think, simple steps yeah. for for personal cyber hygiene. Well, you talk about simple steps, and the one that you mentioned was unique passwords. But is there? When you have a unique password for every site, and I mean, let's think about it, there's tons of sites that we have passwords for. How do you keep track of them in a safe place? Is there a location somewhere that we can store them safely where nobody else can access them online? Sure, so there, there are risk judgment. These are risk judgments that individ individuals are gonna have to make um, yeah. for themselves and what works for you. So there are uh, password wallets, right? Mm -hmm. um, that are that are digital that mm -hmm. can save all of your passwords to one place that is protected by one password. So that's one password that you have to remember, which is a good thing from a usability perspective, right? Mm -hmm. But the trade-off there is if someone obtains that one password, they've got the keys to the kingdom. Right. Um, so you also have the opportunity, you know, if, if it works for you, um, there's the the old-fashioned way of uh, of pen, paper, in a in a secured uh, in a safe, for example. Um, mm -hmm. Some folks utilize that, but really, it's about what what's working for you. Yeah. Um, an additional tip that I'll just I'll also highlight to folks: make sure that we're not reusing our passwords across accounts. That that's uh -huh. significantly that can create a that can certainly create a problem if you've got one account that becomes compromised. Mm -hmm that password then can be leveraged in other contexts. Okay, well luckily if anybody hacks into mine, it's not a very large kingdom beyond there. <laughs> so um, what? here's the thing, you know, when you log on to some websites, it remembers your credit card information and it remembers your password, right? You know, that automatically pop in, whether you type in the first couple digits. Is that safe on certain websites? Is it secure to do that? So it really it depends on on the site. I think from a from a hygiene perspective, it's really looking at the device in question, right? Um, if it is your personal iPad, for example, that you're using to access your online banking, um, that may be safer. 
Um, but I think from a from a cyber hygiene perspective, it's it's always advisable when you're done using that account to log out of it. Mm. Okay. Can we pull up the graphic of the three? <clears throat> excuse me. The three main tips that he has. So you you mentioned create unique passwords. You mentioned the multi-factor authentication. Yeah. So this final tip: destroy hard copies of personal information. Can you uh, yes expand on that a little uh, bit? Absolutely. So this is a world, obviously, where as we're discussing, right, um, we're, we're increasingly digital. Um, and what that means is that there's information that the information about you um, mm -hmm. can be can be often can be used against you potentially. Right. So it's really about having that due diligence of, of that physical mail that you might be getting that contains sensitive information um, to securely dispose of that through physical shredding. Um, you know, when we also talk about uh, privacy awareness, we're talking about privacy vigilance as well. And what we really want folks to, to realize is, you know, as we've been talking about, you are the best uh, best position to protect your own personal data in a lot of ways through through these steps and being proactive, right? So if you, for example, um, are you utilizing a particular service and you become aware via media that that service has suffered a data breach, okay. yep. um, you should you don't need to wait until you receive a notification letter that your account has been compromised in some way, you can proactively take steps to recycle your, your account credentials, but, change your passwords, et cetera. When you do, Michael, when you do get that alert, by the way, I love shredding. It's like such a, <laughs> such a stress relief. Uh, but, but what, <laughs> shredding my, my pounds, uh, not the documents, but that's a different conversation. Uh, Michael, when you get the alert that your account has been compromised, right? I immediately go into panic mode. So, you know, what is actually happening? I know we got to go. What's exactly happening in that moment when you get that alert? So really, it's it's largely driven by by regulatory concerns, but in, in some cases, it's really uh, it's it's entities doing the the right thing by folks, letting them know that they are at an elevated risk. And often, what comes uh, hand in hand with that notification is letting you know that um, the entity that's been compromised is providing you with with credit monitoring for mm. a period of time. Okay. Thankfully, uh, in, mo in most instances. Credit um, may not necessarily be an, an issue, right? Your social security number may not necessarily co be compromised, but providing that service to folks does offer uh, some, some peace of mind. All right. Well, really great advice. Michael Fitzpatrick, the city's chief privacy officer. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you.